Hey guys, welcome back to the Zimmerly channel. I'm Nick Zimmerly, and today we're gonna to be making some farmhouse cheddar cheese. Um, and so the aging time on this will be slightly less than a traditional cheddar cheese. Uh, not to say that you can't age it for four to six months or even longer than that, um, but this is not your traditional cheddar where you would actually cheddar the, uh, the curds before milling them. Um, this uh, is a little quicker of a process, but still has that wonderful cheddar flavor at the end. So uh, let's get to it. All right, so I'm gonna start off by heating my milk up with my immersion circulator uh, to 92 degrees Fahrenheit. You can also use a double boiler if you've got that. So uh, I'm going to add my starter culture. I'm using Floridanica. You can use any other mesophilic culture that you have on hand. And so I um, let that rehydrate, I cover it up so there's no dust that settles in there. And after you've rehydrated those cultures for a few minutes on the surface of the milk, you're gonna stir that in thoroughly. And I like to use an up and down motion as I stir. And that just makes sure that everything's nice and thoroughly mixed in. So we're gonna let that sit for 45 minutes afterwards to ripen the milk and acidify it. And then I'm using store-bought milk, so I'm gonna use a quarter teaspoon of calcium chloride to a quarter cup of non-chlorinated water, uh, distilled or spring water, whatever you gotta use, just make sure it's not out of the faucet because that can kill the cultures that you're using. And so that is also thoroughly mixed in. And then, this is not required, but I like to use uh, an auto. Um, since cheddar cheese, traditional cheddar, is a yellow color, I go ahead and add uh, 12 to 20 drops into a quarter cup of water. Just depends on how yellow you want it. But this will give it a nice yellow uh, tint to it. And so I'm using rennet tablets. I don't have any liquid rennet, but um, you add a quarter of a tablet crushed into a, a quarter cup of water. And that would be the equivalent of using a quarter teaspoon of liquid rennet to a quarter cup of water. And so don't stir that any more than a minute because it does act quickly and you don't want to shatter your curds. Now that that's thoroughly mixed in, you're gonna let that set for, I like to do an hour, just to make sure it's thoroughly, you know, had a chance to rest and coagulate the milk. And then I like to cover it up so no dust settles. So after an hour, I check for a clean break. You can do less than an hour, 45 minutes, but this just ensures that it's a clean, nice clean, solid curd. So after that, I'm going to cut the curds, do a half inch cubes. And so this will take a minute, but uh, no reason to rush this. So you just take your time cutting your curds. And so, um, continuing to cut the other direction. That way I get cubes. Now, if you have a curd harp for the uh, horizontal cuts, then that's great, but I do not own a curd harp. So I just do diagonal cuts like this. And now those diagonal cuts will not get perfect cubes, so once I start stirring the curds, I just cut as I go, if I see any bigger, bigger ones. So I'm just trying my best. So now I've got my curds all cut up, let that rest for a few minutes, and then you start slowly stirring. I know this doesn't look slow, but I have sped up the video a little bit. So just be gentle because you don't want to shatter them. And as you can see, I'm kind of cutting as I go if I see any larger pieces. 
And so as I'm stirring, I'm heating this up to 100 degrees. Usually takes me about 45 minutes to get to that temperature. And so I've been stirring for a while at that point. And so using a thermometer and check your curds and whey and it's at 100 degrees. So I'm then gonna remove this all from the, uh, the heat. And then we're gonna drain our curds. So I'll let the curds set to the bottom over a few minutes, five to 10 minutes. And as you can see, you've got a lot of whey there. So you can, this is of course all sanitized, the sink area, uh, but you can save your curds or your whey to make whey ricotta or you can add it to your smoothies or whatever you gotta do, or you can drain it into the sink. But a lot of people would consider this wasting. So I know a lot of people like to use this to make uh, whey ricotta. Now I'm just slowly draining all this. I don't want to lose any curds into the sink. And so I'm, I'm using a cheesecloth in, in lining a colander. And I like the cheesecloth that you get on Amazon better than the one you get at the store because it's sturdier and you can reuse them. So now I'm going to kind of go old school and tie this around a, a wooden spoon. And I'm going to hang this for an hour to drain before we uh, mill our curds. So I don't really have a, a fancy setup for this. So like I said, we're going old school with this. And so I've emptied my uh, container I had the immersion circulator in, and I'm just draining it that way. And so this is going to allow all the whey to drain from the curds until you have a mass like this. And in which, at this point, you are going to begin to mill the curds with your fingers. Clean hands, as always, but... As I said, with cutting the curds, you should take your time. This might take a minute, but there's no reason to rush. Cheese making is a, is a time consuming process, but it's very rewarding. So we've got our curds all milled up. So we're really gonna salt these curds. And so I use a tablespoon per gallon of milk that you used. And I always use a gallon and a half of milk. And that'll give me a pound and a half of cheese. So I'm gonna thoroughly mix in the salt. I'm using um, just non-iodized salt. You can buy cheese salt off the internet, uh, but I just use sea salt or kosher salt. It all works the same, but non-iodized. And so now we're going to be pressing. So I'm gonna line my cheese press with a, uh, che my cheesecloth. You can use any cheese press, but I have a Manchego cheese mold that I'm using. It gives it a nice little design on the outside. So once I've got all those curds in there, they're all already salted and uh, got them into the mold. We're going to start the pressing. And so I've got this cheese press that I got online um, and there's very many different types that you can buy, but this one's been faithful. Um, and so, and of course, if you don't have a cheese press, you can kind of rig something up, but I would suggest that you invest in a cheese press if you want to get into cheese making. So this first press we're going to, we're going to do uh, a 10 pound pressing and so and it's just to form the cheese and 
So that's after an hour of pressing. We're gonna flip it. And to work it, to get it out of the press or the mold there for a second, but so we're just gently because this is not fully, you know, formed and molded together. Uh, so just gently flip it, and so, and then I'm just going to cover it back up and press it again. And so this is going in for a second pressing for uh, the same uh, 10 pounds for another hour. And I was just pulling that tight there, so there's no creases in the, in the cheesecloth. And so this is after our second pressing and see here it's nice and uh, nice and formed at this point and it's got that nice design from the cheese mold that I'm using and so this is going in for its last pressing and it's going to go for 12 hours or overnight depending on what time of day you're doing the set and so we're going to set it to dry for two days um, or until touch dry and we're gonna flip it halfway through. And then you can wax your cheese or I vacuum seal my cheese. And this is gonna go into my cheese cave. We've got some cheeses aging there. Uh, this is set at 55 degrees. The humidity is not gonna really matter for this particular cheese since it's sealed. Okay guys, so uh, we're, we're just shy of the two month mark on this aging of this farmhouse cheddar cheese. And, um, and we could go to two months, but the beauty of this is, is I could cut into this right now and, uh, and try it out, see how it tastes. And I could vacuum seal it and throw it back in my cheese cave to age longer um, for uh, however you, long you want it to age. Um, I've tried it at one month before. Two months is my, you know, kind of my sweet spot. Um, but like I said, we can still age this longer, but I wanted to, you guys to, uh, see how I made my farmhouse cheddar cheese. So, uh, so we're gonna give this a taste. Now, uh, I obviously I vacuum sealed, sealed this, and I vacuum seal most of my cheeses. Um, but you can always wax uh, your cheese, and um, and that would do the accomplish the same thing. But uh, but I prefer to vacuum seal. Um, so, like I said. Earlier in the video, we've used my um, my fancy mold, so we've got this design on there. I just like how it looks, um, but you can use any kind of mold that you want to press this. So, let's see how this tastes. It's firm, but it's got some give to it, so it's not gonna be a super dry cheese. And then we've got some uh, holes due to uh, just some mechanical issues uh, when pressing. That's typical with cheddar cheese since it is a milled curd cheese, but, uh, but it looks fantastic. And so let's, mm, smells like cheddar cheese. Mm, it's beautiful. Well, before we taste this, give you a, give you a look inside. All right, so here goes nothing. All right, some homemade farmhouse cheddar. Perfect. Very, very good. And like I said, you can age this much longer if you'd like. Um, two months is the average. We're about a week and or, uh, a month and three weeks in, so thought it couldn't hurt to try it now. Man, it's delicious.
Now, typical cheddar cheese, a traditional cheddar will require a longer aging time. So if you like cheddar cheese and you don't want to wait six months or, you know, a few months, uh, this is perfect for that. The bigger piece in half so I can go ahead and vacuum seal these so I can age them longer, go another month or so. And, and uh, it'll make a world of difference too. So I'm gonna take a little taste out of this farmhouse cheddar cheese. So good. Nice and creamy on the inside. So if you enjoyed this video, I'll include um, some other of my cheese making videos in the, in the description box below. So thanks for watching.